Hello everyone, my name is Javier and today we're going to be converting the GenMax GM9000 IED generator from neutral bonding to floating neutral. But first, I received an email about... Look at, look at this. You see it? Yes, it works. Let's check it out. It's hot in the garage. It's really hot. Um, I'm gonna be dividing this video in five parts, okay? Or five questions, basically. The first one is, what is neutral bonding and floating neutral? Really hard for me to explain out of my league, so I'm gonna leave a link up here to the Benjamin Salstrom channel, and uh, he's gonna explain to you how it works and uh, what it is and how to use it and everything, okay? Number two, why if it matters if it is floating neutral or neutral bonding. For what I understood from his video, you only want to have the, the, the bonding connection at one place. If you're gonna be connecting everything to the generator and running the generator by itself, you want the generator to be neutral bonding. That This one is neutral bonding. But if you're gonna be connecting the generator to a power inlet at your house that is gonna be connected directly to the uh, breaker panel, you want the generator to be floating neutral because the breaker panel already have the connection between the ground and the neutral. There is some transfer switches that are um, neutral bonding ready. So basically you don't have to, to change the generator. Some magic happen inside the transfer switch that make it works without any problem. You don't have to do anything else. But if you're gonna be connecting the generator like me to a power inlet that is connected to your breaker panel at your house, you want the generator to be floating neutral, okay? How to know if your generator is um, neutral bonding or floating neutral? You're gonna use one of these. It's a multimeter, right? and you're gonna measure it with uh, ohms, for, and you're gonna look for continuity. So basically, uh, you have a continuous loop on the current, and when this detect a continuous loop, you're gonna make, you're gonna hear a noise. You see? So uh, what you do is, you go up here, and you put this one in the neutral that is right here and then you got this one you can put it right next to it um, to the ground and you're gonna hear the beep you also can put it right here this here is a bolt a bolt that is uh, a ground and you're gonna hear the beep you know so what it means is that these have a, a neutral bonding now, how you convert this generator, the GenMax GM9000 IED from neutral bonding to floating neutral. So you're gonna 
disconnect that loop. You're gonna break that loop basically between the ground and the neutral. What I'm gonna do right now applies to the Predator 9500 and to the Duramax uh, XP9000 uh, IH. It's the same step, the same uh, way to do it, you know? So the first thing, the 9500, the Predator 9500 have the handles on the back. The Duramax have the handle on the back. These have it on the front. And the first thing you gotta do, you gotta take this apart. Now, we're gonna remove this cover. There you go. Okay, now we're gonna take this panel out and you're gonna need to remove the screw from here. There you go, put it on there. Now we need to remove this cover right here. There. Now you're gonna pull this out. Okay, I had to grab the camera to show you so this is the front, the, the panel on the front, you see? Here is the ground. Here is the 30 amp outlet. Here is the gas connection. So you go here from the side and let me see if I can show you. If you notice there is a white cable right there coming down and connecting to the end of this bar right here. So that is the cable you wanna disconnect from there. Let's see how we, how we can get in here. You gotta take this bar out probably to be able to get access to that what white cable that is coming down that is the neutral. So let's see if I can get it. Yes, this is a seven millimeter. So apparently that's all you gotta do. You gotta remove this, say, there you go. And then you got this white cable right here and you remove it. That's the first thing that you do. Now, you cannot leave this cable just like that. You know, we gotta put a, um, hit, hit shrink, um, you will see. So let's do that first. Hit shrink covers um, to cover this right here. I bought this on Amazon. I'm gonna leave a link on the description below. It's pretty cheap, like five, six dollars, you know. There you go. And now we gotta, we need a hit gun. Yeah, that, that should be good. And now we apply heat. There it is. Now we gotta position this white cable somewhere. Let's see where. Put it right there. So we, we put it back. But first we gotta put this back. Okay. 
Now, what you want to do with this white cable is up to you. You can leave it there. You can put a zip tie and put it some other place, but I think just there is a good place. Just there. So this is a recap. Let's make a recap. This is the thing you want to do. First, you want to remove the handles from here. After you remove the handles, you remove the, I think are like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight screws that are around the cover. This cover right here. Then you remove the Phillips screws that are around the panel. You pull the panel. Be careful with the panel, but don't be afraid of putting putting it out because it feels like it's hard, but they are the wires holding it in place. So you got to pull it a little bit hard to be able to get all this access to behind the panel. Okay. After you're behind the panel, you're going to see this knob right here for the screw right there behind the panel. Let me see. So man, you will see this bar, this bar right here. And this bar at the end of the bar right here is right next to the screw hole on the front. You're going to see the white cable connected to that last bolt right there. So you want to remove that white cable from there, put a heat shrink on it. So don't make contact with anything else. You put it there. You put the, the bar back where it was. And we're gonna proceed to close the cover and put everything back and test it again. I already tested, but I'm gonna test it again. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's test it again one more time with the multimeter. Again, we're testing with ohms. Right here, looking for the beep. Test it. Okay, here we go. Uh, we're going neutral to ground. Neutral to ground. Down here, nothing happened. Uh, now neutral to ground. There is nothing happening. I'm going to do another test connecting it to the house. So let's see. There you go. You twist it. It's there secure. Now what we're going to do is test for continuity again. Remember, we want the bonding only at one place. I remove it from here. Now I have a bonding at the breaker panel. So let's see. Test it. Okay, let's go neutral. To ground. You see that? Now if I remove this from here, There is no, no connection. Let's try it again. Neutral to ground. There you go. Let's try it here. Neutral to ground. Neutral to ground. And that's what you want. Whew, it's hot in here in the garage, man. I hope you appreciate this video because it's really hot out here. So you like this video, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, man, make it work. You know, make it worth it. I hope you really like it. It's really hot. Are we done? No, we are not done because you're probably thinking, Hey, and what if I decide to use the generator by itself? What we do? Hmm. Here it is. This generator comes with this 30 amp plug. And what we're gonna do right now is open this plug, 
and make a continuity or a neutral bonding plug. Okay, what we need, we need a screwdriver, we need a wire stripper, and we need a wire 10 AWD, that is for 30 amps, and the 30 amp plug that came with the generator. You're gonna open it. And you will see here, well, this one, usually you have a letters here, like W, X, Y, and G for ground. This one doesn't have anything. Interesting. So this one is the ground. This one is the neutral. How you know? If you notice, this one have like a long leg here, looks like a L. This one looks like a part of a half circle. This one too. Um, this one looks like this, but usually they're on opposite side. This one is the ground, this one is the neutral, this one is hot, this one is hot. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna strip the wire and you're gonna connect those two. There you go. So we got two ends. Remember, the L is the ground and this one is the neutral. So opposite side. You go to the other side, bap. Put it in there. And you tie it down right here. Okay, Let's see, S tie and secure. Yeah, that's tie and secure. And now we put it back. Okay, here is the plug. We are not done yet, we gotta test it for continuity because that's what we want uh, to convert this, if you're gonna use it by itself, to convert it back to uh, neutral bonding, you need a neutral bonding plug. That's what we just created. Go to arms. Let's test, see, beeping. Now we have right here the L shape and the opposite side is um, the ground. Let me see, the L shape is the ground and this is the neutral. There you go, it's working. Now we gotta put it right here where it goes. Let's see, right here, like this. There you go, we twist it. That's nice and secure. Now, we test again, neutral to ground. There you go, neutral to the ground. Um, bolt down here, there you go. You remove this, we test it again, neutral to ground, nothing happened. Neutral to ground, nothing happened. So, there you go. You just created a neutral bonding plug. There you have it. That's how you convert the Genmax GM9000 IED from neutral bonding to floating neutral to use it with your home. Um, also, how you create a neutral uh, bonding plug. If you don't want to use the 30 amp, but you want to use one of the regular ones, I'm going to be leaving a link in the description below where you can get it. On top of that, um, this is a very inexpensive uh, multimeter. Um, I believe it's like $16, $20. I'm gonna be leaving a link in the description below where you can get it too. And uh, the hit ring. The hit ring is very inexpensive too. It's like five, six dollars. I will be leaving a link in the description below. Also, uh, the cable, the 50 amp, cable that I show um, to connect it from the 50 amp plug to the 50 amp power inlet. I'm gonna leave it in the description below. Everything that you see here, including the generator, will be in the description below, so you can get it if you need it, okay? Remember, um, please subscribe. Um, I find out that 
Uh, a lot of my viewers are not subscribed and uh, please give me a thumbs up. It's going to help me a lot. And uh, I want to say hi to every, everybody else that is brand new to the channel. And uh, I don't know. I hope you like this video and uh, see you in the next one. Bye.